Hey guys, Chef Jojo with ECO, and on this episode of Shift Drink, we're gonna talk about the knife, to the clipboard, to the computer. Sooner or later, you have to trade one in for the other. And as always, we're gonna discuss this topic over a drink. So, you know, uh, that's the first beer after a long, long shift. And I'm going to tell you something. I've been kicking this topic around, I guess, my whole career, right? Um, someone, we were just talking. I just did an amazing uh, podcast. We're going to drop that pretty soon with a very good friend of mine. And we we're talking about the struggles of the knife skills versus the clipboard skills and climbing that ladder. And, you know... I made a lot of money using this. I mean, that's this is one of my favorite shirts that we've made is the skills and knife skills have has has really put a lot of opportunity in front of me. Um, I used to be really good with something like this. I still am. I'm still pretty good. And then that became this. And when I used this. I talked about the guy that used that. I wanted to be that guy, but I was this guy. And there's nothing wrong with being the guy that chops everything and makes everything and preps everything and is the chef that's a working chef and or the cook that's a working cook. That, well, I guess every cook is a working cook and a lot of chefs um, still work the line and all that. I do not. I don't work the line. I miss the line, but this, to this, to a computer, to a meeting, to a boardroom. And it makes me think about um, what, what Carlos said. It was, it was good, but um, when you start out as a cook, that's great. It's what you like to do, it's what you enjoy. And man, I love to cook. I really do. I still cook to this day. Not as much as at, I, I can at work. Um, because I'm not watching the whole business. If I'm not at that, then I'm only noticing or doing or handling the granular. If I'm the only one, ma if I'm making the hamburger, who's seeing the rest of the business or whatever it might be, or the hot dog? You know, when I started out cooking, my goal was to own my own place, just to run my own restaurant. And I've interviewed and talked to so many people and that's usually how it starts, right? Oh, are you fall into it as a dishwasher, which was the last episode, and you kind of like the environment, and you kind of like what's going on. And then the next thing you know, you're behind the stove and you're working the fryer, you're working the pantry station, and you're really just trying to like figure it out. And it's challenging and exciting, and there's a lot of pressure. And you know, the night flies by, and you're like, man, that was so much fun. And then, um, you know, that's, that's how some people start. I started out, all I wanted was a restaurant. And I wanted to own my own place and run my own place. And I wanted to own it with my family because I wanted a family business. Huh. You know, uh, I still think about that. That's, that's an interesting part. But I'll digress from owning my own place because I think that's where it kind of starts. And then I'm, I want to focus on the trajectory of a cook to a chef and then eventually to an executive chef. When you start out as a cook, your skills, you're owned by this. That's all you have. These two hands and what's in between here and here. And you have to make it. You have to stand up to the demands of the business and you have to be able to handle the pressure. Now, in that process, it's really, I'm, I'm not talking about the outside of the pressures of the business and you got to work and all that. Let's just focus on the tangible skill set that you need to be a cook. You need to understand flavors. You need to have good technique. You need to know how to season and you need to taste your food and you need to care about it. That's a very good, less basic start right there. You have to care because um, otherwise it's going to be really hard to get good reality sets in. 
you go from needing $9 an hour to needing, I don't know, um, $12 an hour. Or you start it nowadays, it's, you know, hourly wage has gone up since I started. So let's say you start at 12 and then you need 15, then you need 20, and then you need a salary. I remember the days when like, you know, if I was making $16 an hour, I was just rolling in the money. And then I needed $16 an hour became not enough. And I had to figure out how to make money more. And with more responsibility came more money. And if I was only responsible for one station, I didn't get paid that much. But if I knew all the stations, I made more money. And then if I could order the food, count the inventory, make sure of schedule people. And as my responsibility grew, I saw this less and less. I mean, this is a great knife. This is a very unused knife right now. And a lot of times you'll see me on any videos or we did the 1500, that Masahiro that I use, that's been with me for 20 plus years or 20, yeah, we're right at 20 years. Turning, I'm getting older quick. Here's the deal. It's all good if you wanna be a cook for the rest of your life. I support all of you in that, but it ain't about that all the time. Um, it's hard to support a family on cook's wages. The idea is to grow and learn and take more responsibility on other things. And you can't always do that just working the grill at the hotel or, you know, just being the guy that grills or uh, sautés. You have to do more to get more. And in the process, there's sacrifice and all of the things that come with climbing the corporate ladder. And I think we'll talk about that more. But we're so focused on being connected with cooking, which I get, right? But what is your plan? Are you up or out? A lot of us burn out in six, seven years or even less. I know there's not a lot of the people that I went to culinary school with that are still cooking and um, are still in the business. Here's the thing. I'm not really cooking either, right? I'm sitting in a board meeting planning something that's going to happen in five years. I'm sitting down managing, you know, millions of dollars in sales and millions of dollars in cost of goods and trying to understand labor forecast and all of those things and examine your business. No one told me that's where we were going to go. But everybody wants to be all about the cooking. But we got guys out there that don't even know how to, and, and we have people out there that don't even understand food cost. They don't even know how to run their business. So when they go out to try to run their business, they almost immediately fail and try to put more work into it and it destroys them. Sooner or later, life is going to kick you in your teeth and you're going to have to figure out how to get up and move forward and uh, provide for your family. And in the process, you still need to be connected with what brought you there, right? And for me, it was cooking. I walk through my kitchens and I look at my cooks and my chefs that are running this stuff and there's a part of me that's jealous. I'm like, wow, man, that's really cool. You know, you still are connected to it. And then I like, I visit with them, I go through some stuff, then I need to go see this client or I need to go talk to this guest or I need to go talk to my boss or any of those things. And uh, I, I always think about those guys that were on the line and me being them and looking across the pass and going, man, I want to do what he's doing. I know if I could carry that clipboard, I could put two more dollars in my pocket an hour or $20,000 more a year, whatever the price is. It doesn't really matter. I don't want us to forget where we came from but I don't want us to be stagnant. You wanna be true to the business and be the cook that cooks forever, but can't provide the type of life that you wanna provide for your family? I get it. But sooner or later, you're gonna to have to make the call. You're gonna to have to make the call that says that I'm going to step up and I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna own my own place, or I'm gonna get that food truck, and I'm gonna make myself better. It's not gonna be easy. The skills that pay the bills is what I call this shirt. 
right? But there's so much more. You have to have good knife skills and cooking technique to climb the ladder quickly. But you also have to know how to manage people and manage money. Don't let this business fool you. It's not all about cooking. That's the fun part. The tough part is the business side. It's tricky that we call it culinary arts. It's so misleading. You know why it's misleading? And I'll, I'll phrase it this way. We've all used the term starving artists. We have. The only reason we don't use the word term starving cooks is because we have a kitchen in front of us. Sometimes we still go home hungry. Sometimes we still go home hungry. The skills that pay the bills are great. It gets you the opportunity, but if you can't manage the business, you're toast. You're just gonna close your doors or someone else's doors, and it's gonna be hard. You have to know how to do it all. You gotta choose one or the other sooner or later. You gotta put down the knife and put on the coat. Put down the knife and put on the clipboard or grab the clipboard. Set the clipboard down and grab the computer. As the progress grows, as the progress goes, you have to grow. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't have to. I recently talked with a group of students and everybody had these huge aspirations. They wanted to own, a, they wanted to make it a, a giant restaurant empire. And I was like, man, it sounds like I'm talking to myself. That was one kid, he was amazing, right? Another lady's like, it's time for me to open my business for me. Another guy came out of his, it was his second career he's going in. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about second careers in another shift drink, but let's focus on the fact that all of them wanted to open their own place, do their own thing, they had all these ideas. One person, one person out of the group goes, I don't want to do it. I, 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 he listens to everybody and goes, I don't know what to do to tell you. All I want to do is just cook. And I was like, you know what, man? I've been doing this a long time and I've talked to a lot of people and it's very rare that you find somebody that says they just want to cook. I said, you probably are going to be really, really good at it because that's all you want to do. I said, the only worry I have for that is, is that you'll probably be so good in your kitchen that the chef or the sous chef or whatever you want to, the manager is going to try to get you to do more than what you want. Hell, that's what the business does. It tries to make, oh, you're really good at cooking. You might as well, you could probably tell them how to cook as well as you tell them how to do it. And the next thing you know, you're running a, a station, a stand, an area, and it's all because you love to cook. I said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting ride for you, brother. I said, I hope that you get to cook as long as you want and you're able to do it and take care of what you need to take care of. I mean... I've always gone to the next challenge. I've always looked for what's next because that's what my personality does. I'm always pushing for the next level. Some people just want to cook. But when reality sets in, where are you going to go? It's time to make that choice. And the crazy part is, really, you're the only one that can make it. And a lot of times, um, circumstances push you into decisions that you don't want to make and then it's like well I'm not able to cook anymore I'm working too much anyway I'll just go get a job that pays more I'm not even doing what I love and you're out or hell maybe it's not that maybe you are doing what you love to do and it is just cooking I guess my point to the rant is or to my decision is that don't let this fool you Culinary arts, uh, there's, there's an artist form to it, but it's really a business. And if you don't know how to manage a business, you're going to be holding the knife for a long time. And that's okay. But I'm here to try to help and to point these things out before you get down the road of been holding the knife for way too long. <sighs> that's the way I feel about it. Um, I can't answer the questions for you. I can just point them out. 
I hope that this insight will help you before you get started or help you think about what's next for you and how you're going to get there. As always, you guys can follow us on Instagram or Facebook. I say Snapchat and Twitter, uh, but I don't do a lot on those right now. Um, Instagram and Facebook, and always if you want to hit the bell below and subscribe to us on YouTube, we'd greatly appreciate it. And when you hit the bell, you get notified when we throw another one of these up. Um, also, until uh, you see me again, why don't you guys remember your mentors? Chef ECO. We have a giveaway program. Well, if you win, all you have to do is write a letter, tell us about a mentor that was that helped you in your career, and they can get $150. If your letter is picked, then you can get $50. All you have to do is email us at chefeco at extremeculinaryoutfitters.com. And until next time, cheers.